Okay then, part two of the subtractor synthesizer tutorial. Um, last time we looked at the uh, general oscillators, the general layout of, of um, the oscillators, that the audible frequency oscillators, two of them, oscillator one and oscillator two, and the low frequency oscillators we, we identified, but we haven't talked about those in detail. We're going to come over talk about this amplitude envelope a bit more now if you remember we pushed up the decay and the sustain right up to the top such that um, th these four parameters just to recap attack decay sustain and release attack tells us how quickly the note gets up to its uh, maximum amplitude in this case this is the amplitude em envelope amplitude just being that the volume, if you like, of the noise um, of, of the wave, sound wave that, that we're generating. So attack tells us how quickly we get up to the maximum. Decay um, tells us how quickly we descend from, from the peak down to this sustained level which is the level at, at which if you if you press a piano key um, you will get a sound which r rises up to its maximum amplitude um, and then as you hold the key that will sustain on a piano but it will it will drop off initially to the sustain level and then when you let go of the key then then you have a release uh, which is quite quick on, on a piano say um, where that sound diminishes uh, and the release parameter controls how quickly that happens. Um, so e each instrument will have its own uh, amplitude envelope uh, and other envelopes, but for now we're just going to look at the amplitude or, or the loudness envelope. Um, so at the moment we have decay and sustain set at their maximum levels attack and release set at their lowest levels and all that does is um, produce a sound where when we press the key it immediately gets to its peak level um, it sustains us at the peak level for as long as we hold the key down and then as soon as we release the key the sound drops immediately to zero that's what this setup envelope produces now so so that sound when I press the key and when I release it it goes on to maximum amplitude when I press the key off to zero as soon as I release it okay if I um, am going to change the attack parameter so when I press the key now, you can hear it ramps up to that peak level. So it starts off, and instead of hitting the peak level immediately, there's a ramp up to that peak level. And again, the release is, is, is set to zero, so as soon as I release the key, the sound stops. So then similarly, if I take the release up to something similar, Now you can hear that there's a rise up to the peak value and then when I release the key it slowly tails off, it doesn't immediately tail off but there's a die off on, on release. Okay, so that's attack and release. They control the start and the finish of the note. How quickly when I press the key it gets up to peak value, how quickly uh, that's attack releases how quickly the note diminishes to nothing after I take my finger off the key. Okay. Sustain. If I, if I drop the sustain down to something like this level here, you can hear there's an attack up to a peak and then we drop down from the peak to a sustain level. So when I hold the key on, 
It's not at the peak value, but it's sustained at something less than the peak value. I'm going to just drop that down a bit more to make it more. Let's take this release down. I'm going to take the sustain. got an attack up to a peak and then a drop off to a sustained level and then a release to if I take the release up again now I've actually taken my finger off the key there now but it's taken a long long time for the note to to die off that's too long actually you can you can hear it's actually getting uh, slightly less but it, it will take a long time for that note to die off and that's the kind of um, situation if you pluck a, a string instrument that isn't damped um, it will keep resonating for a long time afterwards perhaps not that long um, so if we take it down to sort of this level here taking the key off now and that note is slowly drifting off to nothing okay The decay now comes down to this sustain level quite quickly. So it's up to the peak, drops to the sustain, and then releases. Let's increase that sustain. So, and let, let's take the release right down. So, so when I take my finger off the key, the note is going to go straight down to nothing but I'll put the press the key and hold it uh, it goes up to a peak decays quite quickly to the sustain level holds at the stain, sustain level as long as I hold the key and then as soon as I release the key will drop to nothing because we've set the release to, to zero so up to a peak drop down to the sustain release to nothing Let's increase the release slightly. Up to the peak, drop down to the sustain, and when I release, it, it tails off to nothing. So those are the four parameters to, uh, to allow us to control the amplitude envelope. Uh, those four parameters are replicated again in, in an envelope that I can define for the filter and for a modulation envelope. Now, what are those uh, controlling? Well, let's deal with the filter envelope first in, in, in principle, if not in detail. I think in detail we'll, we'll look at that in the next session. Um, but I have two filters available to me and, and if you I think most people have come across um, graphics equalizers um, where you can filter out uh, low frequencies or mid-range frequencies or, or high frequencies that is essentially what a filter is this filter here that we'll look at filter one will filter out um, frequencies from from the mix so, or from, from the sound that we're producing. Now, sounds will have a, a fundamental frequency, the, the note, if you like, of, of um, the wave. They will also have a lot of other frequencies in there which, which give the sound its particular signature. Um, those harmonics are different frequencies which are imposed on top of uh, the main frequency which defines the note. And the reason why different instruments sound different is is um, to do with the, the different overtones and, of course, the, the different envelopes for, for the various parameters. So next time we'll come on to look at the filters in, in a bit more detail and see that the filter envelope is, is a similar setup to the amplitude envelope that we've just discussed here. OK, well, thanks for listening and um, 
next time we'll look at filters. Thank you.